garbage. Do you know what garbage and one dollar video games have in common? That's right, they both stink. If you dig hard enough, you just might find a treasure. But it's mostly stinky trash, yeah. And while neither of these are actually one dollar games, that is today's video. One dollar games on the eShop. So the first thing I gotta do is load up the eShop and go to the filter settings and change it from 0.1 cents to $9.99. When I do that, I would like to point out, the Switch tells me there's 1,704 items that cost up to $10. That's a lot of cheap video games. And now, unfortunately, it's my job to go through all 2,000 of these games and find every single one that costs a dollar or less. Uh oh, this is gonna take a while. managed to find a few. Oh god, this is not working the way I would like. Okay, so I've actually managed to find a few so far. We have Ding Dong, Henry the Hamster Handler, and Nikki the Home Alone Golf Ball. All of those sound fun. Yeah, I can't say I'm excited to play any of these. Uh, one good thing is I did manage to get Unlock the King half price, so 50 cents. I'm eating well tonight. While I look for even more garbage games, here's a quick word from our sponsor. Hey, what are we gonna do about this new guy? Well, you know, I could, uh, take care of him. No, no, man. I, I mean, like, have you seen the way he dresses? Yeah, he's really making us both look bad. Did you guys watch Yu-Gi-Oh yesterday? Oh, yeah, all right. We need to talk about this whole situation. It's not my fault. Do you two know how hard it is to get premium men's essential clothing brands these days? Uh, actually, it's not that hard at all. Here. <laughs> See? Mack Weldon already offers industry-leading comfortable underwear, as well as socks, shirts, hoodies, and more. These do feel amazing. They'd be great for everyday wear or even working out. And as an added bonus, unlike my old clothes, they don't smell like fish sticks. Ugh. Actually, we bought all of this on Mac Weldon's easy-to-use website in seconds. I even bought Kim these cute socks. Aw, oh, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Kim's gonna love those. Wait, why are you thanking me? Oh, because you bought socks for my, my girl. Your girl? Oh, wait, hold on. Guys, I'm buying new clothes right now online. You better come out and stop me. It says if I join this free Weldon Blue loyalty program, not only can I get normal free shipping on orders over $200, I'll also save 20% on every order for the next year. Mac Weldon is awesome. That's good, dude. Stock up. Thank gosh, his old clothes really did smell like fish sticks. <laughs> yeah, um, you know that, uh, we also all share the same credit card, right? <laughs> hey, buddy! Visit MacWeldon.com and enter code BEATEMUPS to get 20% off your first order. You spent $1,500? I wanna look pretty! Well, thank gosh this video is sponsored. <laughs> Alright, I have managed to find and download every single game on the eShop that costs one dollar or under. And funny enough, they all managed to fit on the Switch's home screen at the same time. So if anyone looked at my Switch now, they would assume that all I play are awful trashy games like this or Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Anyway, I actually thought there would be a lot more, but believe me, I'm not complaining. Well, let's find out if any of these uh, are any good, or if they all belong with me here amongst the trash. The first game we're gonna start with is Sky Piece. It's a side-scrolling side-scroller, I guess. That's all you really do, you just scroll to the side really fast. You move at breakneck speeds while only being able to take up one of these nine directional squares. You control your little sky surfer by moving around the analog stick, or you can try using the Y, X, A, and B buttons. You know, 
if you're a crazy person. This one really isn't too bad. Dare I say it's actually even fun? Visually, it's quite pleasing with animated pixel art, bright colors, and a lot of lighting effects going on. It even has an in-game achievement tracker, but my biggest issue is the speed, man. Too fast, too furious. I like to think I have a pretty solid reaction time. You know, for a young whippersnapper my age. Just missed it. There isn't enough time to determine whether or not the next sprite bursting onto the screen is an enemy or a coin. And by the time you figure it out, it's already three screens behind you. This game was developed by Sonic Power, which I thought might have something to do with that blue hedgehog, but after some digging around, the only other game I could find they ever worked on was air traffic controller for the DS. So I guess they just really had a thing for flying? Ugh. Nikki the Home Alone golf ball. I mean, I see no way that this game could possibly be bad. Ugh. You play as a golf ball that you can customize with outfits for a reason, probably. You don't remember how to get there? That will be interesting. Oh, <laughs> I, I know this game was a dollar, so they were probably trying to work within their budget, but the voiceover narration is like text to speech and it's just bad. All right, so you have two different ways to play. You can use the analog stick to aim and shoot, or you can use touch controls, which, um, yeah, don't. They are awful and unresponsive, but the worst offender is that you're supposed to drag your finger away from Nikki to power up a shot, but the game insists on keeping Nikki's character model at the bottom of the Switch's physical screen. Meaning, you can't actually pull your finger far enough away to charge up the shot without your finger sliding off the Switch and leaving the screen's physical space. There's just no way of doing it. Bad platforming, glitchy objects, and many places to get your ball accidentally stuck, racking up a shot count as you try and worm your way free. It's easily one of the most frustrating games I've actually ever tried to play, made even worse by the fact that I didn't save my progress the first time I played, and I didn't have the balls to play through that terrible first level again. Next game, please. Minefield. This one's for you fellow 90 kids out there that grew up with an old ass computer that had no video games other than one type of pinball table and Minesweeper. Because this game is literally just Minesweeper. But for some reason, the default background is a 9-11 tribute. And I'm honestly not making any kind of joke when I say that uh, every time I got a game over screen by hitting a bomb and then seeing a 9-11 tribute screen made me feel incredibly uneasy. I almost stopped playing the game immediately until I realized you can change the background to something more pleasant, but I still find the choice to have this as the default background on a game of this nature very weird. Next, please. The Puzzle Games. You know, I actually honestly thought that most of these $1 games would be crappy, simple, easy to make puzzle games. But as it turns out, there was only two. So we have Grid Mania, which is a weird tile ball matching game where you move balls onto tiles. It's groundbreaking stuff, really. Unlock the King, however, is like if chess, checkers, and magnets had a baby. The individual pieces move by chess rules, but the King zip zooms its way straight to the end goal once you clear enough pieces out of its path. You know, I actually liked this one. The puzzles are really clever and they get pretty tricky. And there's like a hundred of them. That's like one cent a level. And I got this game half price, what a deal. Maddening Euphoria. It's an endless runner that has you sprinting and jumping along a trippy, ever-changing circle. Think that a dinosaur game you play in your browser when your internet goes out, and yet somehow this game is even worse. I actually like that dinosaur game. Sometimes I play it even when my internet isn't out. This giant line not only acts as a yeah, kind of clever way to hide the level layout changing, but it's also a timer that if it hits you, kills you. Just like everything in this game seems to do, kills you dead. This game is far too busy with a pulsating background and a constantly randomized color scheme that changes every time you die, making the objects and death traps impossible to spot as they're always becoming a new color and sometimes 
sometimes they end up being the same color as the level. Oh, and what's worse still is that jumping in this game is like an episode of that TV show Lost. You never know what's gonna happen next. Every time you jump, the game tries to throw this weird perspective at you of the player getting bigger as they get further away from the world. It completely throws off your platforming, making it harder to land where you want, and even making it impossible to see what's ahead. Euphoria is a state or feeling of intense excitement and happiness. But this game, however, is the state or feeling of intense disappointment and frustration. Maybe that's what they meant by maddening euphoria. So now I can't tell if the name of the game is extremely incorrect or perfectly self-aware. This is becoming very uncomfortable. I'm sat on like a bar and a bar. But the next game is Mecha Tales. Oh, okay, so Mecha Tales has you start the game by selecting how many players you want, one through four. You know, just in case you have three friends you wanna make suffer through a $1 budget Nintendo Switch game. Or hey, maybe all four of you together only had 25 cents to spend on a video game. I ain't judging. What the heck? <laughs> it's like they ran out of money and couldn't afford the game's original artist to come up with two new characters So they just downloaded something off of clip art and made the other one blue Even the other characters and enemies in the game are on theme with the art style I actually had high hopes for this one when I started playing it It's a Mega Man clone kind of but played like a twin stick shooter The biggest issue though is you have one character moving and the other shooting But they are completely independent of each other You have no movement control over the mechs that that follow you and they only kind of loosely follow you too, bobbing around and floating side to side, making it really hard to aim your shots. I found myself more concentrated on where the robot was than where I was and since I'm the one with the hitbox taking damage, it's just a big mess, kind of like this room. I will say though, I don't hate the platforming, it's really not bad, but no matter how far I kept getting into this level, every time I inevitably died, it sent me all the way back to the start. And I mean all the way, even to the first screen that has nothing in it because originally it was the tutorial screen for the game. I appreciate what this game was going for and at least they were realistic with their $1 price tag, but it's crap. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Which old witch? The wicked witch. Ding dong has a very basic premise. You ding to the top of the screen and you dong to the bottom. Switching between the two points, try not to collide with any of the objects flying across the screen and grabbing the occasional power up. The more dings that you can dong before you die, the bigger your score. And I, uh, I really like it more than I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> the neon retro visuals remind me of that game Geometry Wars, which is a great game by the way. There's so many little details like motion lines and particles flying around the screen. It has a fantastic techno soundtrack and the music is synced up perfectly with the gameplay. This game? It's just a joy to play. The simple smooth transition between dinging and donging is so responsive that each and every game over is solely your fault and you can feel that. There's a certain rush I feel every time I grab a speed power up that allows me to smash through blocks or a slow down time power up that makes me feel like Neo in the Matrix. Oh, and if you manage to just clip the very end frame of a block as it passes, you can destroy it for an extra point, which adds another layer to the dinging and donging of the game where you're no longer just trying to avoid the blocks, but you can also go on the hunt if you're feeling frisky. Oh, I regret that. You can even use the points you earn to unlock a large inventory of weird character pieces like a dog face or a guy with a beard. And I chose a donut because I'm fat. Man, it's just a simple joy of a game that proves you only need one simple concept to make a fun and polished experience. I can only compare the fun simplicity of Ding Dong to games like Pong, which ironically, Rhyme. Next, there's Polstereo, Polstereo, I don't know. This one plays kind of like Flappy Birds, but worse. You press A to start, and then you have to keep holding A to give your spaceship momentum. If you let go, it just plummets straight down. You collect these very exciting white squares that make a horribly distracting noise when you touch them. And that's the game. You might be sensing a theme here, but it controls terribly and it's in no way fun. 
The ship moves way too fast, so turning or changing direction in these small areas is <laughs> impossible. I only found any real success in just kamikazeing towards the squares and then respawning and going for the next one. I ended up missing half the time and just hitting the wall. Oh no, okay. I've been dreading this next one the whole time I've been making this video. Henry the Hamster Handler. It wasn't even a dollar. It was the only game on the eShop that actually cost even less than a dollar. It was 60 cents. I had a feeling this would be the worst one of the bunch. Let's see if I was right. Well, I wasn't wrong. What is this? I don't know what I expected, but if this was a physical game, I would throw it away. It's just a series of timed button presses that not only highlight themselves well before you're supposed to press them, but also have a really annoying high-pitched voice say the answer out loud. World A. World there's literally no way of getting this wrong. You can't lose here. As the levels progress, the amount of buttons you need to use expands. And with so many hamsters on the screen at once, yeah, I can kind of get what they were going for here. You got to keep looking around, making sure you're hitting all the buttons for them at the right time, making sure, you know, none of them die. Because they can. These little cute hamsters can fall into spikes and explode into, well, green, but green blood. Who is this game for? Because if it's children, oh no. Again, I do get what they were trying to do here, but once one or two hamsters have gone through the whole maze, you pretty much have the sequence down. But you still have to wait for like 10 more of these hamsters to slowly drop out of the tunnel. So you just kind of sat there mindlessly pressing buttons, listening to a squeaky voice over and over, which honestly sounds less like it's saying the word up oh. and sounds more like the peanut butter baby. Oh. I feel like throwing my controller away playing this one. How many levels could there possibly be of this guy? Oh, 300? 300 of these levels. Somebody designed 300 of this and I would just like to point out that this is the first game that I've ever played that names the person playing the game something than their own name because the game is called Henry the hamster handler and you're the one handling the hamsters so I guess that makes you and me Henry my name isn't Henry go f yourself <laughs> oh well apparently I should have just kept this thing in the trash anyway because to play this next game, I can only use a Joy-Con. Actually, never mind that. To play this game, I have to use two Joy-Cons because this game can only be played in two-player mode. And since I have no friends, I guess I'm just gonna have to do myself. Well, that's just fine. How about we go ahead and start the game? So the entire time you play Soccer Pinball, there's a really annoying crowd screaming in your ears and an annoying horn sound effect, which goes off every couple seconds for I don't know what reason. The aim of the game is to sink the pinball into the other player's side, but the table is so void of life and obstacles, it's honestly pathetic. Also, the visuals are muddy and the ball stutters around the board, almost like I've gone back in time 10 years and I'm trying to play this game online on the Wii. All right, well, I can put these back on now because the next game is somewhat normal and will allow me to play with my pro controller again. And that game is called Cosmonaut. I, Cosmonauta, I don't care. This one is a platformer, again, like Mega Man. If Mega Man was controlled like a wet fish and didn't have a weapon, which to be fair, most wet fishes don't have weapons. So they were pretty accurate with that one. It's a pretty standard game of this style, nothing too offensive, and for a dollar, it was almost decent. But sadly, the controls are so slimy, it's almost impossible to change direction mid-air, even though most of the time it feels like you are supposed to be doing that, and I clipped through more platforms than I actually landed on. I ended up getting to this one level that was just a huge step up in difficulty, but I'm pretty sure that's just because of the terrible game design and it wasn't intended to be this hard. But I could not friggin' jump up this part because these rock things, they blast out at like the same time and then different times and then I, just, I go slipping off the platforms and I'm clipping through the- Needless to say, that's as far as I got in my playthrough. A Bouncy Bob is one of those games I feel like is always on sale for a nickel and it's hot garbage. Just like in that other game that we played, Nikki the 
Kevin McAllister golf ball. I don't care. There's two ways to play here. You hold a button to charge up how high you want to bounce. And then you let it go. And you bounce. And Bouncy Bob, you can't even pick a direction. Rather, he just sways side to side constantly. And you just have to let go of the button when he's facing the way you want to go. Platforming, as you can probably imagine, is an absolute nightmare. You're supposed to kill these creatures by jumping on their stupid heads and oh, nothing says fun like being swarmed by countless amounts of rabbits and not being able to get away while they're slowly chipping away at your health and you're just sat there like a dumb bum charging up a bounce, waiting to bounce on out of there. Oh, fun, fun game design. Hmm. Fun, 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 fun. It sucks. And what's even worse is that somehow Bouncy Bob got a sequel. Bouncy Bob 2. The developer decided that this game would cost five times more. So hopefully it's uh five times more fun. I ain't no mathematician, but uh five times crap just sounds like a lot of crap. I did it. That's it. That's all of them. I can actually throw it away because that's every. One dollar game on the eShop, and uh, they were mostly trash. I would say the absolute worst offender was Soccer Pinball, just because of how much it sucked. <laughs> but yeah, these were all pretty bad. I would say the standouts would have to be Sky Piece, maybe? But definitely Unlock the King, it was a pretty good puzzle game, and my actual favorite, the one I really did like, was Ding Dong XL. For a, a $1 game, you can play on a portable console, just whip it out anytime you want and smash out a few dings and dongs. I'd actually say it's a $1 must have on the system. I didn't expect to find a game I really liked and would probably play again later. Now I gotta clean all this up. I don't wanna throw away games. No, that, that can stay there.